This is the WSL Post Show. A lot to talk about as the top side of the draw, the bracket, has been locked in with the great quarterfinal matchups. Fantastic stuff, but we've just seen the wild card. Continue his mad tear. Your mate George Pitar, Richie yeah, Lovett. Yeah, George, he's, he's on fire. Yeah, no, the, uh, the manly local from North Stain is just on a tear. You can see surfing just pressure free at the moment, coming in as a wild card and taking full advantage of these opportunities. But it, it's obvious. This guy deserves to be on the championship tour. He's got a bit of work to do, but he'll get there. He'll be on the Challenger Series. Uh, but Matt Janoski, uh, the rail work, sublime, and getting himself into the excellent range in, in a championship tour event, impressive. Truly world-class surfing. If there was any apprehension leading into that heat, I saw a bit of a stoic face. It was completely carved away. That was a really consummate uh, professional performance that he put on there. And we're not surprised at what, th what, this, what this guy is putting out to show. Yeah. Big heats, uh, big heats for, for surfers below the cut line as well. Uh, but on paper, a really interesting one today. We knew it was going to be emotional, was the battle between the Pupo brothers. Oh, that one was hectic, man. That was such an emotional roller coaster. It brought me to tears. Um, you know, someone was always going to be relegated back to the Challenger Series, and unfortunately for uh, bigger brother, Miguel, it, uh, it was him who's going to have to go and do some work. Yeah, I think uh, the emotion really came out uh, in the post-heat interview with Samuel, but prior to the heat, these guys gave each other some space. They don't have that intense sibling rivalry, but they certainly went all out in this heat. Yeah, and credit to Sammy. He hasn't surfed since that foot injury that he had last heat where we saw him stepping over the reef. Uh, you know, a, a five for the O'Fall, five for the opening ride, and a five for Miguel. Uh, it was a nice exchange to start things off. Yeah, you can see the backhand surfing here of Miguel Pupo. It was on point, nice and smooth. But there was uh, a radical power edge to Sammy's waves here and then he snuck this one onto priority from big brother and took full advantage of it showing a lot of variety the first card watch this second one here holds that rail line accelerates through it straight up into the quick snap and finishes strong so uh showed all the judges moves all the things that the judges wanted to see there and then here the emotion starts to pour out of uh young samuel just start uh, giving full props all the respect to his older brother just saying that he wouldn't even be in this position without Miguel. Yeah, that's right. I had the chance to catch up with uh, with Miguel after the, the heat, and he was pretty uh, pretty positive about his chances on, on the Challenger Series too. He, he wasn't sort of down in the dumps, uh, had a, a really good take on it. He said he's looking forward to uh, to getting to the Gold Coast and giving him a nudge. So yeah, that, that was cool to hear. I'd back him for sure. He's got such a, a powerful and stylish backhand approach. If Snapper turns on, he's going to be super hard to beat. Yeah, not to mention moving back down to Narrabeen for that second stop. Predominant left-hander. It's a tricky wave to surf this time of year. You don't know what you're going to get, so he'll be a shoe-in for that one as well. Yeah, so Sammy's run in the contest continues, but he's going to have a, a very tough draw because he's going to meet up with John John Florence. John John Florence, part of our Boost Mobile Heat of the Day, along with Gabriel Medina, the three-time world champion. I mean, on paper, uh, this heat looks huge and it definitely lived up to the hype. Oh, clash of the Titans for sure. And Gabriel just... Uh, a real polished performance. Uh, got the lead early, just zero mistakes really. And that surfing, just uh, exactly what we're used to seeing from Medina. Just pinpoint accuracy on the backhand here, really throwing these big vertical turns with lots of power, lots of flow. That one right at 12 o'clock there. That was his uh, best scoring ride. Mid-range seven. And then John John, he found a couple of gems. Yeah, so on that square tail today, swatch, switching it up from the round tail, but it allowed him to release his through his turns a lot more and uh, getting very reactive through the end section there. And on this next wave here, you'll see this searing carb that we're so used to seeing. And he just carves that one around and he stays with it and he needed to finish this cleanly and he got a nice finish, which got him that winning seven point ride. Yeah, and just so rare to see John in celebration mode like that, you know, especially when he's not getting into the excellent range. Uh, so, you know, you, you can tell how much that heat wind meant to him. Uh, he spoke in the, the post-heat interview about just how tough an opponent Medina is and the fact that he just never takes his foot off the gas and always keeps you guessing. John normally really reserved in those post-heat interviews. He doesn't give much, but he was engaged there. You could tell that that one meant a lot to him. Uh, touching on the fact that how difficult Medina is to overcome. He's a, just a, a gnarly competitor, never makes mistakes. 
And John, an outpouring of emotion with the claim, which again, you never really see. No, he, uh, he definitely looked like too, he, he was, even though he fell a lot in that heat, he, he was focusing on the positives, said his board felt good, yeah. uh, said he was happy with his performance and kind of felt that he was going to get a lot of uh, opportunities with the consistency at first light there. And first heat of the day, it's always tricky. We had that brisk offshore wind. We had a new swell direction and it was something coming off the left yesterday. We'd have to say Gabby would have had that advantage, but it was an equal playing field out there. And if John didn't get the finish on that last turn, he wouldn't have got the score. So it was actually really well played from John and nice reading of that wave to be able to find that end section. So he'll take on Sammy Pupo in that uh, first quarterfinal heat when we get that underway. But just winning through in, in that last heat of the day, super impressive, the wild card, George Patar. He's going to be taking on Griffin Colapinto. George is with Stace. Thanks, Ron. George, the greatest surfer to come out of North Stain since Dayan Neve. Well done, mate. Yeah, Richie's not getting a look in. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you. Oh, far out. I can't even believe what's going on, really. I, I just feel like the waves just keep popping up, and I'm... I don't know, I'm just in the spot. It's, I've, I've been enjoying it, but I don't know, definitely a few mistakes in that heat falling on the end sections, but I don't know, I've just felt like I've been making sort of good decisions on the waves, and yeah, I don't know, Lob's such a good surfer. I knew if that wave came, he was going to be able to get it, but it just went my way today. I'm stoked. Turn it up, mate. You're absolutely ripping. Tell me everything. That carb, your board, the fins, I want to know it all. You are, you're ripping, mate. I don't know. I don't, it doesn't even, I don't know. I like, must look better than it feels, but um, I don't know. I've just got such a magic CI quiver at the moment, like all my CI2 pros, and I'm using the Almeric glass uh, fins, those new FCS ones, and it just feels like everything you want to do, it lets you do, and uh, it's all credit to the board, really, and the waves. Like, I, I don't know. I'm just so happy that I get the chance to sort of like hit those sections with the equipment and stuff I have, so I'm stoked. What about if I told you that there's athletes up there in the Red Bull Athlete Zone that are mimicking your body movements as the replays come up on screen? <laughs> this sounds like just not even true, but yeah, I don't know. I just, I feel like it's, e it's sort of easier coming into this event with like a less pressure. You know, everyone's having to worry about the cut and have they just got so much on the line and for me I'm, I'm paddling out there and everything's just experience for me and I'm like I'm just really enjoying the whole experience and being here and getting to know this wave like it's actually a really fun way when you can get on the get on the right ones and it just feels good to like put a few heats together at, on this level and I don't know, just keep the ball rolling. It's pretty crazy that I'm in a quarterfinal. I'm tripping. The ball is rolling like cheese down that Gloucestershire hill. Well done, George, in the quarterfinals. <laughs> <laughs> On your stace. Uh, Rich, been a while since there was a championship tour winner on the men's side in a CT event. Trestles 2003. Uh, yeah, I think we just need to go to the stats for that one. So. Uh, I did. Yeah. I'm happy with that it. That was you, mate. That and was do you, do you yep. think George has got it in him, the way he's surfing at yeah, the moment, to, to take this contest out? Without a doubt. I, I think he's got it. The scores are reflective of that. Uh, if he can clean up a few of those little final moments um, and get to that finish and, and just reduce the amount of time he falls, he is going to be really, really hard to beat. What do you think this uh, this result um, would mean to the Northern Beaches, which are for, forever dominated the, the tour ranks. Of course, I was going to plug the Northern Beaches. It was once one of the most dominant powerhouse locations with more world titles won between Manly and Palm Beach than anywhere else in the world uh, across the women's and the men's side. It was a place where world champions came to recluse and came to train as well. Board rider clubs are a massive influence on that Northern Beaches stretch. North Stain doing really well. George, a product of that. People like yourself, Rick, supporting that. And all the mentors that are living in the Northern Beaches, they're giving back to the community and the, the fruits are in the pudding. And George is doing a fantastic job. And there's way more to come. North Narrabeen doing well, Long Reef, Avalon, Newport, all the clubs going from strength to strength. They are. So uh, everyone's going to be watching that next quarterfinal clash for, for George very closely. He'll be up against the world number one. Not an easy draw. Let's have a look at the Surfline forecast and see what's coming our way today and through the rest of the window. Yeah, that was today was a bit of a surprise, actually. I think it caught us off guard a little bit when we came down. It was consistent uh, and uh, it sort of built overnight. So uh, some great waves this morning on offer. Very contestable as the highlights uh, will show. And then uh, over the next couple of days, we've got this new swell starting to build into tomorrow. And then Sunday looks very, very promising when this swell peaks. 
can see uh, the beautiful colours down there, the red and purples, starting to uh, really move towards the Margaret River region. Look at the next two days, Saturday and Sunday, three to four foot faces. So we'll come and check it out in the morning. But then Sunday, have a look at this, six to 10 foot faces offshore in the morning. The wind uh, has been trending offshore. And then uh, as the afternoon rolls on, it, it tends to swing around and go a little bit onshore, but still super contestable, nice smooth faces. So uh, we're gonna have plenty of waves over the next few days. Oh, we sure are. And we've got so many great matchups to look forward to. Kaipo, uh, still a few heats in this round of 16 to determine uh, our quarter finalists, but it's shaping up beautifully. It is, so let's get you updated. Let's take a look at the Bailey Ladders leaderboard and what's to come in this men's round of 16. When we kick off competition again, we are gonna start off with a great heat. Ethan Ewing versus Seth Moniz, two thirds of the new trilogy movie, gonna be out there battling against each other when we kick off competition again. Jordy Smith up against Cowie Belly, heat six round of 16. That's a rematch of the 2017 Bells Beach final. Jake Marshall, Emai Kalani DeVault, can't wait to see what the Maui boy is going to bring out here to main break against Encinitas' Jake Marshall. And we finish off the round of 16 with a banger. Italo Ferreira coming up against local boy Jack Robinson to establish all of our quarterfinals. That's here live from the Bailey Ladders leaderboard. Oh, good job. A lot of good matchups to look forward to there. And that uh, former winner, Jack Robinson, down in that last heat of uh, the round of 16. And Jack, you know, he, he's got the mindset of a defending champion because he, he missed the contest due to injury last year. And, and we'll see if that can get him uh, past Italo, who's looked really sharp. Yeah, both those boys coming on and, and uh, notice Jack just, he's been lurking around this comp zone, not just up at the athletes area, but, you know, he's been getting down there for a fish and a dive and he's been kind of getting involved in this whole uh, uh, area around here and he's feeling good. You back know, home. He's, yeah, back home, feels comfortable, hanging out with uh, Matty Bemrose, which is always a, a colourful experience. Yeah, and his family, yeah, and it's uh, his son's first trip here, Zen, so uh, they're loving their time here in the West. Let's get stuck into the Biogland Daily Dose. Our top three moments from you know, half the, the round of 16 here, starting with Sammy Pupo achieving excellence despite that injury, Matt. Yeah, that's right. It was the first surf that he's had since that injury where he stepped off in the reef in a searing series of searing carbs and uh, really looking like that downtime served him well. Very composed in his performance and it was an emotional one too, up against his brother and it was a lot on the line for both of these surfers. It sure was. He's super emotional for, for good reason at the end. He, he's losing his mentor off the tour, but he'll be there to cheer Miguel on on the Challenger Series. Coming in at number two, John John Florence claims victory. Clutch moment for him in the dying stages of his heat with Gabriel Medina today. Yeah, giant battle between uh, two world champions, two former champions out here at Margaret River, and a clutch moment there right at the end of the heat. John John Florence uh, just producing the goods on that final wave to get the heat win. And coming in at number one, George Pitta, the wild card, went out there and laid down a couple of the biggest, cleanest cars we saw all day. Yeah, with truly nothing to lose, the wild card, they put on a clinic and Stace Galbraith wasn't wrong. The competitors making noises as he was going into the lip and with those searing carbs and mimicking his upper body torsion throw. He's just got this unique style and he's connected to his equipment and his body and it's looking fantastic. It is looking good and uh, yeah, he's going to have to continue to, to keep those performances on that level because Griffin Cola Pinto has just been ice cold on his run through to this point in the contest, Rich, into the quarters uh, again, and just looking very composed and pacing himself well through this contest. Yeah, that was a, a bit of a scrappy heat that he had today as well, but he seems to be getting the wins. He's always on the best waves in the heat. George is going to have to do what he did today and some more. Uh, he needs to tidy up those little final moments on the wave, make sure he can finish them strong. Uh, th there's the mental game as well for George yeah. coming up against the number one. It's going to be a big one if he can if he can do this, if he can get past Griffin. Oh, Mate, he could win the comp. Oh, I know, the celebration. That'd make the, you so happy. Oh, the boys at North Dame would be, <laughs> uh, well, it could go for a week or two. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, well, stay tuned to worldsurfleague.com for all updates on what the call is for tomorrow. We'll leave you with some highlights from today. We're off to enjoy everything that West Oz has to offer. What do you reckon, boys? I'm going to go do for it. surf, maybe. Let's get into it. See you tomorrow.
Welcome to my private garden. It's my own menagerie. If you're looking for a party, I own everything you see. Heavy ears ahead, where's the crown? They said it's my time. I'm gonna run this scene. If you don't like the way I rule my empire, you can go ahead and you can kiss my ring. All eyes on me, yeah. When I enter the scene, quit it. All eyes on me, yeah. I'll head to the king, get it. If I say so, then it is so. If I say no, you better get low. I'm bending me, yeah. I'll head to the king. There's only room for one hustler sitting way up on that throne. Guess I'm showing my true color. This copyrighted event broadcast is produced by the World Surf League for broadcast around the world and may not be retransmitted, reproduced, rebroadcast, or otherwise distributed or used in any form without the written consent of the World Surf League. If you don't like the 